Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over a brief introduction into Newton's law of universal gravitation, and then we'll do a couple examples at the end of the video to show you how we use that law to calculate the force of attraction between two objects. Okay, the Newton's universal law of, gra law of universal gravitation is usually stated like this. Every particle attracts every other particle. There's a force between every particle in the universe. And here we have one particle, we could say that's the Earth. We have another particle that is the Moon. And we represent that force with an arrow. So that arrow represents the force on the Earth from the Moon. And then we have a force on the Moon from the Earth. And then we would go on to say that the force is directly proportional to the product of the two masses, or the product of the masses of the objects, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. And that would lead us to this equation. The force of attraction, the force of gravity, is equal to, now it says directly proportional to the product of their masses, so that means we're going to multiply the mass of one object and the mass of the other object. This is m and m for the masses, m of one, m of the other. And then we're going to divide that by the square of the distance between them, because it's inversely proportional to the square of the distance between those two objects. As the mass is increased, the force increases. As the distance increases, the force decreases. Okay? Now they get farther apart. All right, now there's one thing missing from this equation, and right here you may notice that there's a space, and we're going to put G in there. That is the gravitational constant, which we'll talk about in the next slide. All right, so there's a couple of other things I just want to point out, that the force acts on a straight line between those two objects. So it's just a straight line between those two objects, and the magnitude of the force on each object is the same, but it acts in the opposite direction. So the magnitude of the force on the Earth from the Moon is equal to the magnitude of the force on the Moon from the Earth. But you can see they point in opposite directions. It's an attractive force. They always attract each other. Okay, there's no repulsive forces here with the masses and gravitation. So here we have uh, the force on the Earth and the force on the Moon. And the next slide, we're actually going to use our equation to calculate the amount of force on the Earth and the Moon. Okay, so here's our equation. We have G, which is our gravitational constant, which I'll show you in just a second, as you can see. And we have the mass of the two objects divided by the square of the distance between them. So I'm just going to plug the values in. It's pretty straightforward. We have our gravitational constant. Now you'll notice the gravitational constant has units of Newton meter squared kilogram squared. So this is the mass of the Earth. 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilogram. This is the mass of the Moon. 7.35 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. The masses are typically given in kilograms. If they're not, you have to convert them to kilograms because that's the units in the constant. Now the distance you can see is often given in kilometers, 384,400 kilometers, but the constant has meters, so we have to convert 3.84 times 10 to the eighth meters. The distance must be in meters, the masses must be in kilograms. Okay, This is the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. All right, now we're just going to put the values in for the masses, the mass of the Earth, the mass of the Moon, and we're going to divide that by the square of the distance between them. And we come up with that the force of attraction between the Earth and the Moon is 1.99 times 10 to the 20 newtons. Okay, I just want to point out again that the force, the amount of force on the Earth from the Moon is 1.99 times 10 to the 20. The force on the Moon from the Earth has the same magnitude, so they're both the same. Now, sometimes students will ask me, well, which one is m1 and which one is m2? It doesn't matter. So you're just multiplying the two values, m1 times m2. So it doesn't matter which one you put. It doesn't matter if you put the Earth's mass here and the Moon here, or the Earth here and the Moon here, because it, let's just say, for example, this was 3 and this was 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Well, if we switch them, this is 3 and this is 2, then 3 times, no, 2 and 3. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. You're just multiplying the two masses, so it doesn't matter which one you put in. It's m1 and which one you put it in as M2. You'll notice we have M1. When we're talking about planets and rotation, typically the central object I like to use as M1 to be consistent, and then the thing that's orbiting around that central object we put in as M2, as I did here, Earth and Moon. Okay? But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what order you put them in. You're just multiplying this times this times this divided by the square of the distance between them. All right, now let's do a little bit more interesting problem, maybe. Now we have other particles besides the Earth and the Moon and the planets and the stars. We have people, and people are attracted to each other through their gravitation and through their mass, okay? So we have two people, 
we have a 65 kilogram person and an 80 kilogram person. They're sitting next to each other in physics class, but they're separated by a distance of 1.5 meters. We want to calculate the gravitational force between those two objects, those two people. Get out your equation, and we have the equation is gm1 m2 r squared divided by r squared. Plug the values in. G is same G. It doesn't matter what you're talking about. It's still the same G. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times the mass of one person. It doesn't matter which one. We'll put the 65 gram person, kilogram person first since they're mentioned first. The 80 kilogram person and the distance between them is 1.5 meters. And we're going to square that. And we find that the force of attraction between those two people is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. That's not very much force. So they don't come sliding towards each other. There's they're attracted to the Earth. The force is greater between the person and the Earth. Of course, there's the friction and all that kind of stuff. Okay? So that is how you use Newton's universal law of gravitation to calculate the force of attraction between two objects. All right? Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that interesting and helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. We will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.